This morning, I'm going to do a reading from a book I found, ramble a bit, drink some booze, and explore the dark side of poetry. Clayton Eshelman wrote this poem called The Yellow River Record. It is a, uh, a poem, a single poem. Um, he wrote it. It's nine pages long, but it takes up more space in this book. And so Clayton Eshelman was born June 1st, 1935. He is an American poet, translator, and editor, noted in particular for his translations of Caesar Vallejo and his studies of cave paintings and the Paleolithic imagination. The Yellow River Record was um, written after or during an LSD experience he had with his lady friend or wife, Carly. Um, and it was written on July 26, 1969, which I was just a shade over a year old then. The Yellow River Record. I followed limbs, the lamb, all experience promises. Take the trail, the Appalachian from Point of Tingeret, parking circle, now road, now over stones. I followed your body, slim, small. I questioned being there was Carly. Sat on high rock, mid-heaven sky, high elms, maples, searching to be touched by the sun to get one experience down this walk, and then we, beyond the trail, it was in us, searched as a man might come into full presence, be with you on a blanket, sun over boulder, a basket of fruit. It was in us, flies in tall grass that cry green is pines. As the poem dissolves, solves it, and he begs for language to reach out, stomach, it worked in us, and then I was on you, up above you, dropping my pants to strut before you, penis, vegetable, my violet trembling head, t-shirt on, warrior, it solves us. Solves us for an instant. Solves as germ or sweat. You touching me in the heat. Dropping to you in the itch of it. How beautiful you are. A woman with her pants pulled off. Waiting. Grass crinkled. The cherry of you. Peach of what do we explore? Is it living? Always in us. Is it an he or she? I suck on your legs. You suck on my cock. Eve wants Adam to know. This is all. All of our understanding braced as your sweet Mouth pulls, licks, watching your eyes, woods. Is there anything other than this? Praise of him, this lack of shame, pulsation, and then I was on you, buried. He opened in my eyes, buried, Zoa in darkness, O oh God. The poem cries into language. Is there anything other than this? The arrow, yin, flex, bright, orange, yang, circle.
circles that tapestry of light within me, who as sun sees its aura. Have I come, faceless woman, have I come only to laugh in you, to trail here this orgasm Eve wants Adam only to know. And that's the first three pages of this poem, and that's all I'm going to read of it tonight. I love these lines. It solves us, solves us for an instance, solve as a germ or sweat. You touching me in the heat, dropping to you in the itch of it. How beautiful you are, the itch of it. That itch of desire, that itch, that seed, that kernel of desire for another individual. I understand this desire. I have desired other individuals. I desire other people. The motivations behind this poem, this experience of oneness that he felt, he, when the acid he took that drug opened the universe to him. And he f had this sense of this, uh, uh, in this, this biblical kind of a, there's this biblical narrative going on here of um, when he talks about this lack of shame and that lack of shame that Adam wants Eve to know and Eve wants Adam to know that there is no shame in this act, this act of being of intimate knowing with another individual and that's another biblical word of knowing, to know someone. It has this intimate implications. To know someone, in, um, to know someone in, without clothes on and without to be naked before another person. You know them and you see them as only you see them in a way that, that they themselves don't see themselves. Because when we look in the mirror, or when I look into the mirror, I don't see me. I see some other body. I see some other body that's other than this. And this body is hard to accept that I'm not 20 years old anymore. I'm not this, uh, I'm not that anymore. I'm someone else. And um, the madness of this knowledge that you are someone else. And in the Bible, in, in Adam and Eve, after they ate the fruit, they felt shame of their bodies, shame of who they were. And we carry that shame with us today. And he, in this poem, he's talking about this lack of shame, this being able to accept this other person for who they were. And I think that's kind of what the motivation behind these words are. That's what this, the dark side of this poem is, the underbelly of this poem is this desire to have this lack of shame. To be just, to accept who you are for who you are in the moment. And this is probably, this is something that he experienced in 1969 when he took acid. I've never taken acid, acid before, so I don't know what that experience is like. I've only um, had a little booze and, and uh, whatnot. I smoked a little weed too in the past, but it gave me bad panic attacks, so... There's no fun in that for me. And, um, well, there's a lot more here. If uh, you go back through the reading of it and you have any ideas for what it means, um, please 
leave those leave that in the comment section before. And I'm going to just read one more stanza from this. The poem cries into language. Is there anything other than this? The arrow, yin flex, bright orange yang circles, the tapestry, the light within me who as sun sees its aura. Have I come, faceless woman? Have I come only to laugh in you, to trail here this orgasm? Eve wants Adam only to know. Wow. The Yellow River Record by Charles, by Clayton Eshelman. And this is for my favorite poet, Charles Bukowski. Cheers, Charles Bukowski. Your poems are wonderful, and hopefully you are doing well in the happy hunting lands, the afterlife where you are at. And have you been reincarnated back into this world as some other poet? some other life. Thank you for watching. This is Dark Side Poetry. Bye-bye.